Morning, everybody. This is Pastor Tom welcoming you to another study in the Word. I want to thank you for joining me. Please understand that this video is not being done because uh, we're trying to uh, make a very uh, TV-oriented special video with all of the lights and everything that you need to, to see me properly. I just want to get this down so that you can listen to it. These uh, videos are going all over the world, and people are listening to them for Bible school and stuff. So it's more important for them to just... Uh, Pay attention to the Word of God and what I say. With that in mind, this is our 11th session. That's over five hours of teaching on illuminating the true and exposing the false. And what we're trying to do really in this particular session is talk about the uh, starting with the fivefold ministry gift. Talk about the apostles' ministry. We haven't got there because I've been talking about women. And we're going to finish this up either in this session or the next on women. The study of women in the church, women in ministry, it's so controversial, and it really shouldn't be. Uh, over the years, I've studied a lot on this, and so I hope that it's helped you, enlightened you, and if not, today will. And uh, so we're going to start, if you want to, uh, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Um, I also ask you to <coughs> excuse me, share these videos with your friends and uh, post them on your Facebook pages and so on so people can see them. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, many, many people have been set free by the teaching along this area, uh, especially women. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34, and I've used this scripture uh, quite a few times already, but it says, the whip, it says uh, out of the King James Version here, let your woman, women keep silent in the churches, for it's not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be in obedience uh, as also says the law, and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it's a shame for women to speak in church. And of course, we pointed out that there's a word here um, for the wife in the Greek uh, that uh, is used either wife or woman. It's only one word. It's just translated according to what the uh, the people who are translating this uh, think it should be used for. And same way with men, men or husbands, just one Greek word. So in context, you got to see what he's talking about. Clearly here, he's not talking to all, to all women here. He's talking about husbands and wives' relationship. Now, if you're joining me for the very first time on this video, you need to go back, please, and look at all the other videos leading up to this because I explained it in great detail. And one of the worst things people do in the body of Christ is get one little teaching of some, something somebody says, take it off, run with it, and get all upset, instead of listening to the whole thing so you can be set free. And we do that. In America, we're terrible. And, and uh, uh, you know, uh, the reason I'm, I'm doing so much teaching on this is because this is not just for Americans. This is going all over the world. And people are looking at this from other societies uh, where uh, they don't have the freedoms we do. And uh, their society believes much like it did when the Bible was written. And women were just absolutely, you know, treated like, quite frankly, uh, second-class citizens, dogs, some of them. I mean, uh, they had no right to vote. They didn't. Uh, they weren't educated. Most of them didn't read. Uh, it was just that's the way it was in society. So people say, well, why weren't women, you know, incorporated into, you know, the, the first uh, 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 part of the apostles and church and so on? And the truth is, is that at that time, it just was not going to work. People wouldn't have accepted it. And uh, it's a very sad fact, but it's true. But today, as, as over the years the church has grown, we see women uh, stepping up and taking a role that uh, has been fantastic. And uh, I, I, there, there's also a, a scripture here in 1 Timothy chapter 2 that people use. And one of the things I don't like about uh, certain individuals is, is the stubbornness of which they hold on to a particular opinion without studying it really, uh, uh, you know, to find the truth. They want to hold on to their opinion because uh, they've stated a certain thing, and uh, when they find out maybe they're wrong, they don't want to admit it. The truth of the matter is I've been wrong many times in my life. I've studied all the time and see, well, I missed it on that one, <laughs> and I didn't mean to, but I had to admit I was in error. I was wrong. Now, in this area, many people are in error. They're wrong. They have uh, uh, basically taken certain scriptures and, and taken women completely out of the mix of anything or very little or limited them. And this is really not what God ever intended. 
And uh, we see this here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, this scripture again. Here's another scripture they use many times in verse 11. Let the women learn in silence with all submission, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor observe authority over the men, but to be silence, to be in silence. And, of course, people rip that out of context. And really, he's talking again about the husband and the wife situation here. And uh, we, we, we talked about all of that pretty much in detail. But, of course, he's speaking about wives here with little or no education. He's talking to people that uh, were in a culture of society where women just didn't have any place. Uh, they couldn't even get up and speak in a, in, a, in a forum. Most of them couldn't vote. The only time they maybe even could speak publicly really was in a, in a situation in a judgment where they had been raped or something. Other than that, they kept quiet because that's just the way society was and uh, it was really not very good for women. Um, but by, you know, we need laws of interpretation when we're looking into the word of God. We need, we need to, to understand every scripture must be interpreted in the light of other scriptures along the same subject. It's called rightly dividing the word of truth. Many people don't do that, you know, and we've done that in this session. So go back if you haven't heard and, uh, and see, but people need to also interpret the word of God in the light of the new Testament, run it through Calvary, run it through the love of God. Uh, run it through the culture of the time. Understand the, the society they were living in when it was written to them and what was going on there. Um, you have to go back to the Greek words and the Hebrew words sometimes. It's all of these things and more is how we interpret Scripture. So women, were women just to be quiet? And if, that, if so, they couldn't teach. They couldn't be apostles or prophets or evangelists or pastors or teachers. If that's clear, if that's true, either it is or it isn't. If all women were are supposed to be silent in church and not teach, you know, like a lot of these people say, and a lot of the denominations that believe that stuff basically are hypocritical because they won't allow women uh, a very much role. If they do, it's it's only with other women or overseas. It's okay overseas as a missionary, though. Say. And so I think that's just hypocritical, quite frankly. Now let's go to Acts chapter 1 and look at some things here, and let's open our minds and our hearts up. If you've been taught differently, it's okay. You know, a lot of good people believe differently about this, but <clears throat> what's the truth about it? In Acts chapter 1, if you look at verse 13 and 14 here, it's very, very clear. It says this, and when, and when they were come in, they went up into the upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotus and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So we had both men and women in the upper room waiting for the baptism of the Holy Spirit that Jesus commanded them to receive in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole, whole house where they were sitting, all of them. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire and set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them their utterance. Notice there was nothing here about the men just getting the utterance and the women not getting the, the utterance. Women were speaking, and they were in church. They were gathered together. Where two or three are gathered together, there am I in in my name. There am I in the midst of them. They begin to speak loud. They begin to speak boldly in other tongues, both the men and the women. God didn't just defeat, um, you know, didn't uh, discriminate against one or the other. You see, it wasn't out of order. It was in the order of God. Now keep on reading. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them the utterance, verse 4. And uh, there were dwelling uh, at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. When, they, the, when, when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and confounded, because every man heard them speak in their own language. Some of these people that were speaking were women. So it's very interesting. Now... These guys said, oh, you know, uh, verse 13, look at verse 13. Others mocking said, these guys are filled with new wine. These people are filled with new wine, <laughs> you know. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, you men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these men are not drunk, drunken as you suppose, and women, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. 
But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters, not just your sons, but your sons and your daughters, shall what? Prophesy. Now, uh, my denominational friends say prophecy, or prophesying is just preaching. Preaching in, in a little more uh, with a little bit more anointing. Charismatics and Pentecostals amongst us say prophecy may be somebody standing up and giving a word or a tongue or interpretation or something like that under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. They're both right. They're both have, they both have their, their place. They both need to be talked about. But I want you to notice that it, it didn't, it, it said both your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. It's not, he's, not, he's not just exclusively saying men in general uh, either. He's not saying that. He, you know, women, older women or older uh, uh, or younger women could fit into this category. Verse 18, and on my servants and on my handmaidens, there it is again, women, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. So both men and women will prophesy. To prophesy no matter what you believe about it, whether you believe it's a gift of the Spirit in operation with the word of wisdom uh, attached to it to prophesy. You stand up in church and prophesy. Whether you believe it's preaching and teaching with a little bit more enthusiasm, like some of my denominational friends still prophesy. Both men and women are included. You see, we need to understand this. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth, beneath blood and fire and vapor and smoke and so on. Then he goes on and says in verse 21, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall uh, call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, both men and women. Here on the day of Pentecost, God poured his spirit out, out on them. It's the same thing in Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 46. Look it up. Peter started preaching to the people, both men and women. The Gentile church was started. And in the middle of his sermon, he gets interrupted. No, nobody was baptized. No altar call was given. <laughs> they just got saved and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. You'll see that women prophesied in Luke chapter 1, verse 38 through 42. You'll see that women prophesied in Acts chapter 18, verse 26. And I want you to go over to Psalm 68 for just a second, please. Psalm 68. Because we're getting to the meat of the issue here. We need to understand what God's Word says about it truly. Instead of taking scriptures out of context, let's compare some scriptures. Let's see some things. Acts chapter 68, verse 11. And I will go back to another verse that I forgot to read you, but let's go to Acts 68, verse 11. The Lord gave the, uh, gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Now, the... The inter it's very interesting here because the word company, if you look it up in the original language, clearly, clearly is the word that means female messengers. And one translation says female messengers, a numerous host of female messengers, Fe female preachers. Great was the company uh, of, of the, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of the female messengers, of those, the company of these female messengers that published the Word of God. Now that's just what it says if you look it up in the original language. Now, flip back over for a second to Acts chapter 18 because I wanted, I kind of flipped over that, but I, I want to, I want to, I, I actually misquoted that. He's not really prophesying here, but I did want to point this out to you. And there's a lot of scriptures we could point out to you things about, but I only have a certain amount of time. I'm only going to deal with this within the concept of a couple more sessions or one session, and that's it. So I'm going to move through this, and you can look it up yourself. But in Acts chapter 18, verse 26, the scripture says this. Let's go up to verse 24. Let's start there. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexander, an eloquent man, and a mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Verse 26, he began to speak boldly in the synagogues, whom when Aquila and Prissa had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto them the way of God more perfectly. Now here we, we see that both, both Prissa and Aquila taught this man more, more things about God. If a woman can teach one man, she can teach a million men, you see. Uh, uh, it's either true or it's not. She either had to shut up 
or she was able to minister to this man. Galatians chapter 3, please. Let's look at what the New Testament actually begins to say about this and rightly divide these things. You'll find out that uh, many, many people in the New Testament, uh, women in, in, in the Old Testament, were used mightily. Ruth and Deborah, and it just goes on and on and on. And uh, many of them stood in the office of prophets or prophetesses. And uh, in the Old Testament, why not the New Testament? See? Um, in Galatians chapter 3, if you look down here at verse 26, For you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now who's a child of God by faith in Christ Jesus? Men and women. Doesn't make any difference. Doesn't make any difference what country you come from, what your background is. We're all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you be the Christ, then you're Abraham seated according to the promise. All of us in the church, there is no male or female. Now, in the marriage covenant, there is male or female. There is the man takes the head role there. It's very apparent. We've talked about that. But in the church, there is no male or female. There is no difference between that. God looks at us spiritually speaking in Christ Jesus. And uh, it's very important that you understand that. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's go over there. I'm hoping to get this finished up. I do not know if I can do it. We'll try. But I want to read this scripture to you, a very important scripture. I want you to understand it because this is a very important thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. Now in this, I declare unto you, I praise you not, that when you come together, it's not for the better, but for the worse, coming together in church. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear there be divisions among you, but and you and I partially believe it. For there must also be heresies among you, that they that which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before one his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What have you not houses to eat in, or to drink in, or to despise the church of God, and shame them that are not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? I praise you not. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken from you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, which when he had supped, the cup, the New Testament of my blood, this do as often as you drink it and remember something. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you do show the Lord's death till you come. Okay. Both male and female. No different here. Women can take communion, not just men. <laughs> you know, women were coming down there and getting drunk and all that apparently and doing the same things. He was rebuking them. But notice this, verse 27. Whoso, wherefore, whosoever eat this bread and drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy and unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, or a woman, no different, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. I don't think too many people would argue with that. Maybe they would, I don't know, but it's both men and women. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, what, what cause? Not discerning the Lord's body, not understanding the Lord's body when we take communion. <laughs> Think about that. For this cause, many, could be translated most, are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. You ever wonder why so many people are sick and weak? Why so many people sleep? Actually, the word sleep there means die prematurely. Oh, yes, we have something to do with that, <laughs> brother and sister. Yeah, but the Bible says, you know, it was counted unto once for a man to die. That's all it says. It doesn't say when. The Bible talks a lot about extending your life, things you can do to extend your life or things you can do to cut your life short. Here's one of them. For this cause, many are weakly, weak spiritually and physically, sickly, sick spiritually or physically, and many have died prematurely, spiritually or physically. Think about that. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. All right. Well, he talks about the body of Christ here, discerning the Lord's body, understanding the Lord's body. One of the ways we don't understand the Lord's body, as an example, is we don't understand the function of the gifts of the Spirit. Like many people say, the gifts of the Spirit all pass away. Well, there goes a lot of healing right there, because one of the gifts of the Spirit is healings, plural, in the Greek. 
Think about that for a second. Working of miracles. You see, because we don't discern the Lord's body, we don't discern the local church. Many are weak, many are sick, many have died prematurely. Because we don't discern the apostle and prophet in the church today. Many are weak, many are sick, and many have died prematurely. Wouldn't that be true? Certainly it would be true. Yes, it would be true, and it is true. You need to understand that. I need to understand that. Many are weak, sick, and have, have died prematurely because they don't discern the woman's role like they should in church. To me, it's one of the worst doctrines that we ha that people have. It's one of the most demonic things that's ever crept in to society and into the church. The fact that women cannot hold some kind of role is demonic, and I say that meaningfully. It's a doctrine of demons. Anybody who believes it, in my opinion, has been seduced by a doctrine of demons. It holds people in bondage all over the world. Women with the call of God are sitting in congregations where they'll never be able to fulfill that. Not only will it cause them great anxiety to sit there week after week knowing that the anointing of God is upon them, having gifts and callings of God sitting on the inside of them, yet because some religiously inspired, demon-inspired man and man's doctrine will not allow them to be set free and to be able to partake and to move into the calling and the gift of God on them, whether it be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, or something else, they are bound up as they sit there year after year after year, and many souls will never come into the kingdom of God, and many people will never be healed set free and delivered from evil spirits and all kinds of things that would have been took place if that woman was allowed to move in the anointing and power of the Holy Ghost that God had intended her to move into. That's a sad, serious thing, and it's true. Those poor women that sit there many times, uh, bottle up all this inside, the anxiety of it ends their life prematurely. You see, it works both ways. Many, many, uh, many, many great ministries have been aborted because of this foul, stinking, demonic doctrine that people have accepted as true when it's not true. Holding any person down, any creation of God down like that, whether it be male or female, for in, in, in any way say, uh, like that, is, is not liberty. It's bondage. It's legalism. I don't care what country you come from. You go to some of these countries overseas and, and see the way they treat women and how women are oppressed and how women are pushed down and beat and treated like dogs and raped and everything else. Do you think that's godly? Well, it's no more different than, 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 than some doctrine and some denomination and a bunch of men who sit around and think they're superior to women. Listen, I've had women on my board for years on purpose just, just to make people like that angry with me. And I'm telling you right now, women have been a great blessing to me. Many women are some of the most spiritual people that I've ever met. Many churches, if they did not have women in them, would suffer greatly. There's nowhere in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as we go over there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren and sister, there's no difference, no male or female. I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles carried away of these dumb idols, even as you were led, whereby I give you to understand that that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are differences of gifts, but the same Spirit. There is differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but the same God who worketh all in all. Nothing is mentioned here in the Greek or anywhere else about men or women being different here. The gifts of the Spirit are for whoever God places them upon. But the manifestation is given to every man that is not male, every person, to profit all people in the church. For one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Does it have to be spoken out sometimes? Yes. To another special faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings, plural, by the same spirit. Didn't say, you know, just to the man, no, male or female. To another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kind of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one and self same spirit dividing to every person severally as he will. Look it up. There is no male or female. There is no, no. Uh, well, the men can prophesy, but the women can't. The men can give a word of knowledge, but the women can't, the, you know, no. For as the body is one, see, male or female, if we're in Christ, we're one. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many 
are one body, so also is Christ. There is no male or female, we're one body. For by the Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free. May, may I add, he just got through saying that in a, a, a while ago, you know, in Galatians, or male or female. We've all been made to drink of the Spirit of Christ. Then Ephesians chapter 4, to finish this off. Ephesians chapter 4, in a scripture that we'll be talking about a lot here. Let's look here at verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the location wherewith you were called with all holiness, lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. He's talking to the whole body of Christ here, men and women. Endeavoring to keep the peace, to keep the unity of the Spirit, the bond of peace. There's one body and one spirit, even as you're called, one hope, one of your calling, one one God, one Father of all, who's above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the, Christ, of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended on high, he led captivity, captivity, and gave gifts unto men, not just not just males, per people. Look it up. And he gave some, these people, members of the body of Christ, men and women, apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why did he give them? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and knowledge of the Son of God, a perfect man, a measure of Christ's gifts, that we be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, slight of men and cutting craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You think something so important. If it was divided between males and females, and there was to be no females involved, he would have said, "Hey, all you guys, all you men, all you 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 male gender people, this is for you, but the females it's not for." But he didn't. Nothing like that in there. If you look down at First uh, uh, Corinthians chapter twelve. And you read all the way through it at the end, it talks about the different ministry gifts. It says nothing about just males. It talks about, again, the body of Christ being one, all of us having certain offices, functions. It never says the male does this, the female does that. The only time that that's ever even mentioned is by people taking scriptures out of context and trying to make them say it says that when it doesn't. If you look at the Greek, especially, the words are, are all people, individuals, members of the body of Christ, no male or female. The only time he, he, he distinguishes is in the marriage covenant. So we can see how people have misunderstood this and misappropriated all of this. Now, Pastor Tom, can a woman stand in any of the fivefold ministry gift offices? The answer to that is yes, a woman could, under, could stand in any office. <laughs> It's very difficult for women to spend, stand in some of these offices in certain areas of the land because they still have these uh, laws and rules, and regulations, and, and the way women are treated in, in some societies, it's going to be very difficult for them to do that, just like it was in the New Testament. But it doesn't, doesn't change the fact that they can. If, we, if they cannot, then something is very, very wrong. God doesn't anoint things that are wrong. God doesn't bless ministries that are wrong. God doesn't raise up ministries that have effect on millions of people's lives that are wrong. Take into consideration Marie Woodworth Edders during the great 1990s, way back, way, excuse me, 1990s, excuse me, in the 1890s and the early 1900s, I'm sorry, millions of people were touched by her, literally. Tens of thousands of people came to Christ and were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed and delivered through her ministry. There's no question about that. That's historical fact, both secular historical fact as well as Christian historical fact. Catherine Coleman, so many people were saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and healed in her meetings. I, uh, at that time, it was just uh, it was an incredible thing. For many, many years, she traveled around, had great conventions where people gave their hearts to the Lord Jesus by the multitudes. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, different things happened to them, delivered. No question. The anointing of God was upon her. Now, I know there's a certain segment of people out there that are going to say all these people are false prophets. Well, you know, if, if that's you, please don't, you know, I mean, uh, don't even comment on my website because uh, I, I don't want anything to do personally with, with speaking against something the Holy Ghost is doing as supposedly of the devil. You can risk that, but I'm not going to. 
Amy Simple McPherson, the woman who, very apparently, God used her so mightily to start the great four-square denomination. The whole four-square denomination that has literally affected the entire world was started by a woman, clearly an apostle of God, Amy Simple McPherson. Catherine Coleman was an evangelist. Marie Woodruff uh, Edders was an evangelist and, and worked in an apostolic way to build churches. I mean, I could give you person after person after situation after situation after situation that was mightily used by God. I go to uh, uh, Central America, Panama a lot. Many of the, of the pastors down there, the best ones that I've been to are women, many of them in four square churches. I, uh, some of the very most powerful women preachers I've ever seen and best pastors are women literally the, 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 the people crowd to their churches they serve there they're humble i know one woman who serves in a place no men don't even want to pastor there it's so dangerous and she had a great education had a, had offers to take big churches but she pastors a church in the middle of this area down there we go she is a tremendous woman marilyn hickey gloria copeland beth jones I mean, the list goes on and on and on. How many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and yea, I would even say millions of people would not be in the kingdom of God, not be taught, not be filled with the Holy Spirit, not be healed, not be delivered, and not be discipled if it wasn't for the faithfulness of women across the world preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the bottom line to me, the fruit of the whole thing. Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruits. Fruits of the Spirit, yes, but fruits of ministry also. Until next time, we love you. Women, if you are bound up sitting in some place where they teach that, if I was you, I wouldn't even think twice about it. I'd, go, I'd get out of there. And I'd go to a church where they would release me into what I was called to do and not sit around anymore wondering whether it was the will of God. God bless you. Until next time.